Hey everybody, I'm back with a haul. I have a couple of things to share um, from a few places. So let me get to it. This is from the stamp market, this first set. And let's see if they have their, oh here. Here's the website I ordered from. You can actually order their products from other places. Um, so that's their direct um, website. But I did order from their new release uh, beginning of November. It's kind of weird because she's been doing more than one release a month. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, but she had this Jumbo Holly and Berries. Now, I know this is huge. Look at my hand. My hand is probably about as long as the actual um, Holly leaf right here. But I thought this would be great for making tags. So um, because it only has one Holly leaf, I actually bought two dies so that I can cut more um, at a time and save me some time. But anyway, I bought, um, the holly leaf. And then I, I also picked up this poinsettia set. Um, it's a nice size poinsettia. Uh, there's also the die that coordinates with it. So I did pick up both of those. Um, not that I don't have poinsettias, but you know, it's always nice to have them. And this is a layered stamp. So you can see here, um, there is more than one layer and I don't know if she has, no, she doesn't have a, um, what do you call that diagram here? So maybe you go to the website and have to download it as the image to how these all layer up together. So there's that. And then I purchased this die or sorry, this stamp called Holly Jolly. Um, this is again, one of those stamps where you can have a layer, you know, color behind the stick drawing, <laughs> stick drawing. Um, you can use a different color behind it. So, um, that's really nice. And then there's a bunch of different, you know, um, greenery. So I did pick up the die for it that matches as well as the stamp, uh, stamp, the die that matches the word Holly Jolly. So you can cut those too. So I did pick up both of those that coordinate with this Holly Jolly set. So that's it there. And then the last thing I got from the stamp market this time around is this huge tag. See that? It's really long. This is great for big packages. Um, and it, it folds up here. Mm, and I'm not sure why she did it that way. I didn't even look to see you know, what the deal was with this piece here. Because it's perforated if you look at that. Um but it's got some really big sentiments that go inside the tag and then uh these little ones right here so um yeah i really like the i really like the fact that it's huge because you don't always see that in products today um from the mft i actually got i did get my um jelly bean but they're sending these out this is a little wood um veneer chip i want to say it's kind of like those things that you buy you know for scrapbooking and stuff i don't typically use these on things but it's kind of cute so i thought maybe it would be kind of cool to just i don't know, reuse it for something um from their release i purchased the um what is this called outside box level up so if you haven't seen this it's kind of like one of those um, hmm, dimensional box cards. Yeah, dimensional box cards. And typically the flaps on all the the dimensional box cards, are they have it two directions. They have the landscape one that's lengthwise, and then they have one that's portrait. When you have one that's portrait, um, vertical, all the flaps are pretty much, I believe, the same size. But... If you have one that's landscaped, the two flaps on the front and the back are usually, uh, you know, wider than the two on the sides. This one is a little bit different in that it's got a stepped up look to it. I would say if you're interested in it or trying to understand what I'm describing, look on the MFT website um, if you haven't seen it already. And this is their website. They have um, all of the little parts and pieces to do the level up. Um included here and then the back flap is actually an arch so instead of it folding with four flaps 
it has a back piece that's an arch and then the front is is a um, straight across um, sort of look to it and the way that it's designed is that and this is actually the side view of the card so you can step up levels so you'll have a riser sort of look like if you were looking at um risers in a gym stadium it's kind of like that when it opens so it does fold flat and you can mail it out i don't know if i did that any justice to try and describe that but you guys get it i hope um and then i bought the add-on which is the um low profile um add-on so if you want to have your box instead of having it rise up like this you can have it be one level like that and just use you know a lower profile and have them all be the same across the bottom so um yeah let me see if that fits that similar to this piece right here in height so these two go kind of coordinate together and then i got a freebie um i guess it's a free with 60. i know that's a lot right because i think this die is 49 dollars. that's crazy isn't it i know um um stitch sentiments uh and so this was the freebie i chose um for the dies that i bought so that's from mft and then i went ahead and ordered from scrapbook.com there were a couple of things that i wanted to get and namely it's this uh distressed resist spray and the clear texture paste from heidi swap that's toner reactive and i talked about this um on another video where I did my play with the toner ink. Um, and you can see uh, how much, well, maybe you can't. If I tilt it, you won't be able to see it anymore, but there's uh, quite a bit still left in this bottle. Um, but this is to kind of play with some of the um, scraps that I have and also try different techniques. This is for the scraps and this is for the different techniques. So you can use this with your, um, what do you call that? your stencils which i have plenty of and then this is more of like taking the actual toner um toner stuff let's see this toner scrap which you can kind of see i have um spraying this onto some substrate or card base and then getting the actual you know negative to print out because this is toner reactive so that is the distress spray that I bought. And then what else did I buy? I went ahead and added some things to my cart that I have been meaning to get and just um, hadn't purchased before. So this one is the Little Red Wagon from Honey Bee Stamps. And you guys know what, if you're old enough, well, actually younger people might, might know this too, but the Little Red Wagon, you know, the little flyer Red Wagon, and it's got like little wood here, um, to put on the sides if you wanted to add that too but that's what this is and I picked up this um, textured impressions 3d embossing folder this is an old one I've been meaning to pick this up for a long time and because I wanted to um, look for something that would um, have the highs and lows that's what the 3d um, textured impressions are they have highs and lows um, that are, are not at the same level and so I wanted to use this with the, um, the toner ink as well. Um, cause Tim Holtz shared a very neat, um, not, not, it's not a new thing cause you can actually ink into your embossing folders, but he used the toner ink to do some gold foiling on an embossing folder and it looks so nice. So I wanted to try that in this case and see if I could pick up the fa la la part in some of these higher spots to just give it some gold gilding wouldn't that be a pretty um it's, it would be pretty just as a plain embossed image but when you add foil to something like this that just takes it over the top i think so i'm gonna try that technique with this and then i of course my curiosity got the best of me um this is the new magic mat that scrapbook.com put out this is nothing more than like a self-healing pad like this one right here but this is designed to fit in your cutting machine and I happened to buy the extended plate um, magic mat again 
nothing more than a self-healing mat. It's not magnetic either. It's just a self-healing mat. So you would swap this out for one of your um, plates like this. See how um, mine looks. It's not, this one isn't warped. Interestingly enough, it's not really warped. Um, probably because this one is supposed to be my don't cut me plate. And I cut into it. <laughs> um, I don't like to write on this plate because I like to be able to flip them. And sometimes the ink will transfer on to whatever I'm cutting. If I flip it. So um, I forget sometimes and I cut into it like I did here. Um, but this is to prevent warping of your plates. So you would just replace one of your plates with the, in this case, this is the extended cutting mat um, for my big shot. Um, and I don't think they make them for the other uh, machines, like the Gemini has an A4 size. I don't think they have an A4 mat. But if you can find a cutting mat that's A4 in size, which is not new, this whole technique isn't new, um, then you can um, do that as well. Now, I don't know who came up with this idea. I'm not going to credit it to anyone in particular because I haven't done the research. Um, but like I said, I tried this before with my Gemini. Um, I kind of had mixed results with it. So I have gone back to just using my regular cutting plates for my Gemini. I don't know how well this will work with my Big Shot. I assume it will work exactly the same. And um, maybe I'll get better results unless... I don't really have warping in my plates, um, honestly, for my Big Shot. Probably because I don't use it as much as I use my Gemini. Um, my Gemini plates are all kinds of warped. Um, but I find that it doesn't really affect my cutting. Look at that. Um, it doesn't really affect my cutting too much. Um, others might be having issues like you might not be able to see this, but there's a dip in my plate right here. And it is, a uh, <laughs> it's wavy. My plate is wavy. So I, I don't really tend to have issues, um, with cutting, um, even though it is wavy like that. And once I get to the point I have to replace it, I, or I feel like I need to replace it because I'm not getting the cutting um, that I want, then I'll do that. But I just don't find that I need to do that that often. So yeah, that's where I'm at with the whole cutting plate thing. I'm just, you know, if you've watched me long enough, you know that I like to try new products to see for myself and decide for myself whether it's something that is really something I like to have. This is one of those things where we'll see if it's going to be any of, of any use to me. Um, but I did go ahead and purchase one just to find out. I might, I might just keep it with my Big Shot. It's kind of a nice thing. I wonder if it'll be good for embossing too. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. And that's all I have for now. I'll be back with some shares because I'm kind of excited to share with you something that I've finally made. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.